issues yesterday. Everybody had some issues yesterday with Facebook and YouTube. So welcome to that family. But we so appreciate those of you tuning in to us on 910 AM, the Superstation, whether you're listening on the app, whether you're listening on the website, whether you're listening on social media, wherever you're listening, we thank you for uh, just hanging with us for these months. And we every day strive to bring you amazing topics. And of course, our powerful personalities, sometimes messy, a little bit always messy, sometimes <laughs> classy, always classy, uh, bossy, uh, always bossy, a little bit techy, uh, always techy. We try to bring you the best. And today we have another great and amazing topic. I'm Katrina Harris Earl, and I am sitting here in Chicago, Illinois today, a little bit gloomy, but still hot, still warm, not hot, warm, just a little warm muggy uh, here. And I, I'm just so grateful to be here. Yesterday, can you believe there was an earthquake right up the street from my house, centered up the street from my house while I'm here? Wow. An earthquake in California, not Chicago. So I am sitting here and we got our girl, Sabrina Monday, looking colorful for fall. Rio is posted up. He is not missing. Not missing. We got issues. And let me see if I can say it right. Lake Geneva, Ohio. My first time saying it and I got it right. Hey, 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 girlfriend. <laughs> that is good. And Lady Chrisette Ellis is holding it down in Detroit. Gloria Mayfield Banks, you know what? She mm -hmm. is every woman. And if you ain't been following her on social media and just seeing her go from Rolls Royce to yacht to helicopter, <laughs> you missing it. But right now, she is on the ground in Ellicott City, Maryland, okay? At least right. physically on the ground. But we know you're on, on cloud nine and we can't wait to hear about it. Oh my gosh, y'all. Today we have a great topic. I want to visit with the girlfriends. I just want to say that tomorrow I won't be on the show because I'm getting these stitches taken out of my mouth. Dental work, y'all. Dental work. I, when I tell you, I didn't never thought you could have stitches in your mouth. So I just feel like if you see me struggling to talk, mm -hmm, I'm still struggling to talk. Still kind of like a little Sammy <laughs> Davis Jr. <laughs> twitch. I'm so Ooh. excited. <laughs> So I'm going to, let's see, who am I going to? Let's just go around uh, the world here. Sabrina Goa Monday, Lake Geneva, what is happening over there? How is the, how's the switch, you know? How is it? How is it being over there in your new home with your new, 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 new? You know, I'm amazed. I amaze myself. I really do. <laughs> I amaze my own doggone self, Okay. I just said, I am Sabrina Goodwin Monday Moving Maven. I know how to move, <laughs> baby, okay? And don't miss a beat, don't miss a beat. It's all about the attitude. I can complain, I can whine, I can be like, I don't know anybody, I'm all alone. It's the first time I've not been around a kid, one of my kids in my entire life, but I choose joy. I choose happiness. I choose right. peace and understanding. So you know what? It's all good. It's different, very different right now. We're in kind of a temporary housing situation, but we've made it amazing. And it's like, hmm, I'm kind of starting to like this little bungalow, okay? <laughs> 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 and so 
you know what? It, happiness is what you make of it. And so we're doing good. I can complain, but I mean, really, when I think about people who are really dealing with right. real life situations, like right. I talked to a girlfriend yesterday diagnosed with cancer and not good news. It's like, God, I dare not complain. So it's all good mm -hmm. in Lake Geneva, Ohio. Chrisette, how are you? Hey, 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 everybody. I am doing great. You're muted. I need to hear your sister. We've been doing this a long time. You should know. Okay. I'm sorry, you up. I'm, I'm right, Miss Messy. Right, I mean, she, ne she never fails to come through on who she is. And so, you know what? Hey, it's all good. When a person show you who they are, come on. What did you just Believe say, Gloria? Believe them. So, I'm so glad to be here today with my messy girlfriend, Sabrina and Katrina and Gloria. Um, but, you know, it's a great day. And, and, Sabrina, I totally agree with you that you have to choose choose. Joy is a choice. Happiness is a choice. And you know what somebody said, what you focus on the longest becomes the strongest. And so because you're focusing your energy on being happy, being joyful, being grateful and thankful, you know what? It's a beautiful, wonderful day. And so I'm excited to be here. I love the topic that we have on today, but there's a lot that's going on around the country. You guys, yesterday they talked about the Pandora pa Papers. And I was like, what is that? The Pandora Papers. So I don't know, Gloria, you might be a part of these pan Pandora Papers. And let me tell you what it is. Um, an international consortium of investigative journalists has released an expose on the financial secrets of these offshore dealings of dozens of the head of state and public official and politicians from 91 countries, which means that in the short, a whole lot of money is on in offshore accounts. And it is really, really raising some um, eyebrows because some Why of Why you put my name um, in there? I, what I is my name going to do with offshore? This is where the- this is where She the being messy. She is. being messy. She being all messy. Their money, okay. All their money. So Gloria, <laughs> trust me, that's a compliment, okay? Because money coming <laughs> to Gloria Mayfield. What's your last name? <laughs> bang, bang. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But I mean, you, yeah, you I really mean, don't want your really, name in there. Okay, that's just really <laughs> interesting because the the thing is, it's not. I don't think the issue. I don't think it's it's um, illegal to put money in offshore accounts as long as you have paid taxes on that money right. and you're not using that money as a shelter or using those offshore accounts to hide your money and then you know sometimes when you find out who these individuals are especially heads of states and and presidents and their countries are really really poor and you know these poor people are trying to make it and yet and still you know their presidents or whoever are running the country are taking money and hiding it you know, um, so that they don't have to pay taxes. So it's just really, really interesting to find out the names that are on these accounts. So I just thought that that was interesting. The Pandora Papers, the Pandora Papers, baby. I don't know if I want to be the one to to pull the curtain back on Putin, though, because he don't play fair. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, that's true, <laughs> too. Yeah, his, his his name, <laughs> yeah, his name was definitely uh, came up in the list of um, individuals that had money uh, in offshore accounts. So, you know, it's just interesting to see what, you know, to have that kind of money. Wow. So Gloria, mm. you've been living the life of the rich and famous. I mean, you've been everywhere doing everything. I mean, your life is just, wow. It is a wow. Wait, so look, talk to us a look, when bit. you was, okay. So first, when you were talking about the pandemic, papers i was like okay whatever it ain't got it got something to do with papers it, it has right. something to do with reading and i'm dyslexic i was like no nah, i know i ain't a part of that i know i know i'm not a part of that whatever she thought about y'all are so crazy pandora well, okay got it i got it i got it i got it but it's been exciting it's been exciting travel has been exciting to see y'all woke up at what five o'clock this morning to catch a plane at seven o'clock to come back from Fort Lauderdale, Miami to get here to Baltimore. It's just been running ever since. 
the people I'm hanging around, the millionaires, the billionaires, the Rolls Royces, the diamonds dripping, the back room buying a jewelry, the wholesale of jewelry. Okay, this is my lesson for all my girlfriends. Never, ever, ever buy anything from a jewelry store. Ever. Yes. The markup on jewelry is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Mm. Like the markup on retail clothes is ridiculous, but the markup on jewelry is really ridiculous. I mean, you've got to hang with the right people to get to wholesalers. You know how they say people with money have more money because of the things that they do and the people that they know. So I saw that going down. I mean, for real, I've just seen some stuff. Y'all seriously. Okay. So you guys know I was with Stormy and I went to her house yesterday and I like, whenever I go to her house, when I get to Geneva, Sabrina ain't going to be able to find me because I like to walk around the neighborhood and I like to see the neighborhood. So I, you know, people like, to, it's so funny. The topic today is inside the house and all I like is outside the house, which would be why, because I don't like to decorate. So I'm getting ready to go and see her neighborhood because it's in Miami. The lights are on. It's really beautiful. All the houses are white and just, it's just beautiful. So I'm walking out, I'm getting ready to walk out. And the security guard starts to follow me. And I said, it's safe here, right? He said, yeah, it's safe, but I'm safer. I'm like, okay, <laughs> all right. So he, so he follows me around. I'm like, for real, you're going to follow me? He said, uh-uh, you're not walking around by yourself. I mean, it's a different kind of lifestyle when you walk around with bodyguards all the time. I'm like, wow. I mean, my mind is like, like blown, like super, super blown. But it was exciting. It was very exciting. You know, it's, you know, it's a lot. It's a lot going on. It's a lot going on. So we'll keep talking. I'll it's keep unfolding stuff as it comes. It's, it's a lot. A lot. It's a lot. And I know I was as I was putting this together, I was thinking of all my girlfriends. I certainly was thinking of you, Sabrina, how to make a house a home, because I know when you moved, that's the first thing you talked about you had to do was definitely thinking about you, Chrisette, because we know that we are just waiting. Now we saw the house, the house, but we haven't seen the house that and we know it's right. taking your time you are taking right. your time so we cannot wait to come back to detroit to see the house okay oh and let's say this let's let's be clear let's be clear we coming we coming yeah. we staying we eating we're gonna do all of that we want to see the movie theater we want to see all the bedrooms we want to sit sleep on every mattress we want to see every <laughs> chandelier we want to sit on every toilet we are going to see all of it all of it like we don't kind of girlfriends let me just say it right now yes and i'm gonna yes, walk around yes. the neighborhood and i'm gonna walk around the neighborhood <laughs> And Gloria having, um, you know, redone your home and been in a, a new beautiful home. I know you love to um, to see other people's homes and you talk about it all the time. And I've been talking consistently about how I have just been clearing the clutter out of my house. And just from room to room, Allison has gone in every room and showed me how to just redo it and, and have it look different. And I'm just loving it. I'm loving it. We're starting on my office next week. And so you're, today we're talking about your environment will shape your thoughts, your feelings, and level of inspiration, how to make your house a home. We're going to talk, you know, of course, about the furniture and the colors and all that stuff in there. But we're also going to talk about the emotional part the uh just the vibe in your house different homes have different vibes mm -hmm. and how do you work to create that vibe i can honestly tell you that there is a different vibe in every one of these chicks houses and we know what that vibe is and you know we ain't fixing the walking glorious house and smell no onions and no <laughs> bacon that is not her vibe okay that vibe no. No. ain't happening still. unless amy there's a candle okay still you must the vibe. Candle. A still okay. the vibe <laughs> It's sterile, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> sterile environment, they said. So sterile, so that's I, funny. <laughs> so before I give you, you know, I have some good juicy stuff today. And of course, we want to hear from our audience 313-778-7600. What do you do in your home to make it a home, to make it feel like a home, whether you're single, whether you're married, whether you got dogs, cats, whether you have one kid, no kid, kids gone. What do you do if you move a lot, not move a lot, live in an apartment, live in a mansion? How do you make that house a home? And so I'm just going to go to the girlfriends and 
I know you got a lot of stuff, but what's the one thing that you feel like makes it feel like when, because I know we love to travel and we love to sleep in the best hotels all over the world, but there's nothing like home. We all love coming home. So Gloria, I'm going to go back to you. What is it that when you come home, because there is. She don't I want mean, to come seriously. home. She ain't never there. She <laughs> ain't never there. Okay. That's why I went to her first. What is it that makes, but you still love your home. What is it that makes your home yes. feel okay. like home? Okay. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. Okay. Okay. First, I'm going to tell you this. I love a clean house that's very organized. I mean, if the kitchen isn't like really, I may not cook in it, but it is crystal clean like this. Maybe that's why I don't want to cook any because I don't want the stove to be crystal clean. I mean, I, I like a crystal clean home. I like a crystal clean bedroom and I like a crystal clean bathroom. You know, the master bathroom. I mean, that's what means a lot to me. I know the main areas and that means a whole lot to me. I don't like a lot of dirty clothes. Around. Even if I'm not going to put them away, they're going to be clean and put over there somewhere for someone to touch them. So that's my whole thing I, I you know it's not change is not what's important to me i want some artwork up there but i don't have to put the artwork up there ken is better at the art he's better at picking out the art and putting that thing up there and i'm not a big decorator but i'm like okay with it because i like the outside like today when i got home i noticed the grass was cut so that causes me like so much joy because i spend a lot of time like i just said walking around outside if it's war i'm on the phone outside i'm walking outside i'm gonna be outside and that's what makes me happy. Yeah, mm -hmm, that's it. Now, after they give their good answers, wait, after they give their good answers, then you come back to me and I'm going to make my answer better, okay? <laughs> really, really quick, Gloria, when you say you like clean, do you just like the look of clean or does you do you have to smell clean? Like some people, they just want to smell pine salt, pine, something. Do you care about the smell no. or is just look clean? All of it. All of it. I don't like the junk. I don't like the clutter. I'm not a clutter person. Some people like the clutter. I don't like the clutter. I don't like the clutter. I like. I want it to look clean. I want it to smell clean. I want it to be clean. Mm -hmm. I want it to be put oh, back in place. It. I want the spices in the right places so that when Ken cooks, oh, he can find the right spices. <laughs> <laughs> Sabrina, how about for you? How about for you? What was the first thing that you're like, I got to do this to turn this into a home? Mm, well, this temporary housing, it was like I had to get over, first of all, the size of it. And so I was like, okay, okay, everything out in storage, take it somewhere else. Do not clutter. Don't bring all my big furniture in this existing place. Um, this place takes smaller furniture. And Kenny's like trying to put up pictures everywhere. I'm like, dear, let the walls be the walls, okay? <laughs> Don't put up another picture, okay? <laughs> okay, so for this house, I needed to feel the feng shui, you know, the space. I needed to uh, have it be, I needed to circulate and let the air, re, uh, you know, be. I just need to feel good with not so much stuff. And mm. so in most of my houses, and Kenny is amazing because he's found all of the houses we've ever lived in. He is the one to find wow. the house. So he does an amazing job finding the houses. And then I learned from a woman how to decorate. I, it wasn't my gift, but I learned how to decorate with the wall window treatments and the accent pieces. I'm not good on art. That really isn't my thing, but smells and flowers and accent pieces. That's, that's mm -hmm. where I come in. Um, so for this particular house, it was just getting the right rugs in the right place and not overdoing, making sure that we didn't try to, I mean, really, it's just too much is too much. I don't like clutter. I need space. So that was important for this home. Mm -hmm. That's big. That's big. That's big. Chris, we got a minute. Might have to hit you up again after break. But yeah, hit me. Thing? Hit me on the other end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you need to come back to her <laughs> because she got a lot to talk know. about when it comes to home. I was like, let's go back to me. Happen. I don't have no. I don't have any window treatments. I don't put up any kind of shades. I don't have any kind of curtains, and I'm okay with it. Uh -huh. Wow. <laughs> okay. Now that she's made that public service announcement, okay? Get a round of applause for no window treatments. Okay? And wait, 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 wait. <laughs> you know what? I remember Gloria coming to my house when we were uh, at the other house, and I was showing her all the things that I was going to change. I'm taking this carpet out, I'm going to put a hardwood floor, I'm doing this. And she just looked at me puzzled. I was like, what's wrong? You know, she's like, why are you changing it? 
I'm like, Gloria, do you know how old this property is? She's like, she just walked and said, I wouldn't change anything. I was like, wow. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Well, we are going to take a break. We are going to go. One of the things that makes your house a home is when you pay your bills on time. So we're going to pay our bills on time today. <laughs> and Gloria will talk to the Facebook audience. For, no, Sabrina is talking to the Facebook audience for a minute. We'll see you right back here. We got issues. Don't change the dial. Hey, Facebook. Oh, my goodness. It's been a minute since we've seen you, been with you. Thank you for hanging with us. Thank you for being flexible. I'm just curious. Somebody says, for me, it's the kitchen, bathroom. Of course, the bedroom have to be clean. So we talked about what makes your house your home. What makes it, you guys? Somebody said, unfortunately, my house hasn't been a home since my grandpa passed away. We have three households in one now, and it's just not home. Yeah, I hear you. Different things, different strokes for different folks. What makes it for you? Type in the chat, you guys, because it really it, it really is amazing. We've moved six or seven times. I've lost count in the last few years. And it is a gift to be able to make a house a home, whether your space is small or whether it's large. I think it's a gift to make it feel a certain way, to make it smell a certain way, to make it look a certain way. And the bottom line is you could do it on a budget or you could have a whole bunch of money and do some things. But we're not talking about the amount of money it takes to make your house a home. We're talking about your feel, your way, your style. Um, so we want to know what makes your house a home. Call in at the radio station. We want to hear from you. We've been missing you guys. I'm telling you, yesterday we had no social media, so we couldn't be on the air. A uh, couple of other days, we didn't go live for one reason or another. And so we're just also curious to our tribe, when we're not on Facebook Live, do you go to the 910 app and listen? Because we want you to always be able to go to the app. We're always there um, if we're not on Facebook. So make sure you find us because we are here Monday through Friday, six to seven Eastern. But we want to hear from you. What makes your house your home? Um, I so remember when my mother, when we'd come home from school and those peanut butter cookies would be smelling. Those are some of the greatest memories that I have as a child when the house smelled like fresh baked cookies. So we want to hear from you. How are you guys doing? The fall, the season has changed. Have you started pulling out your winter clothes yet? Somebody says, yes, I go to the 19 app and sit in my car and listen. Good. And tell a girlfriend. We are building the tribe, you guys. All right, we're going back. Thank you for being with us today and every day. Talk to you soon. We all can agree. My favorite part. Oh my goodness, we all can listen to Luther. A house is not a home. Thanks, Michael. We can just listen. We can just let Luther play the whole time. Just don't you just wonder what he would be singing right now. <laughs> but I just had to sing that, play that song coming back from the break. I hope the Facebook audience was able to hear too that, um, you know, a chair doesn't make the house. The room doesn't make the house. It's all about the people in the house that make the house. And I'm going to bring my uh, girlfriend in 
And I just want to share a couple things that you can do to make your house a home. Floors, believe it or not, this may seem an unexpected place to start, but I find that one of the things that unites homes everywhere is an attention to what happens under your feet. One of the most expensive ways and something you can do is just throw some rugs. Some throw rugs can make a difference. Lighting, having primarily lived in rented spaces, this person says you won't, wouldn't, uh, even imagine the difference that lighting, brightening, the difference that that makes in your environment. And uh, some places you go into just don't have the right lights. Um, storage, Sabrina talked about that, clearing the clutter, that's a big thing. Artwork, whether you are, you know, Jay-Z and can put the biz biggest and best artwork or you go to Ross. I was at my girlfriend's house and all her artwork came from home goods. And I mean, when I tell you her house is fly, um, some customized details you could change. I got a piece of furniture from Ikea and my mama went to the store and got uh, blinged out um, knobs and changed that Ikea little piece of furniture and made it look like something. I was like, okay. And Mr. Tong from Tax Rabbit put that on there and it looked like a whole new piece of furniture. So those are just a couple of things. I'm going to share some more that uh, are physical ways you can turn your house into a home and make it your own. Chrisette the the decorator of all decorators the wood we like to see how many trees you gonna have up for christmas <laughs> you got a list of 30 things what are a few things that have to have you have to have in your home to feel like it's a home okay so for me i need windows that have a lot of light coming through i hate feeling like i'm in a dungeon i hate feeling like you know, I'm in a room and I, I I get energy from the sun. I get energy from the light. So my favorite place is always going to be where there's a window. And, you know, at my other house, I literally lived in my kitchen because and it wasn't the only place where there was light, but it was it was windows pretty much throughout the kitchen. And so I stayed in there. Um, I had an office at the other house. I hardly ever stayed in that because it was a darker room. So I need, I like my walls to be light, not really dark. Uh, also what's important for me, especially in the bedroom is great bedding. When I tell you great bedding is a must. And it was so funny, you know, we always tease um, Chuck is that we had to be real careful because we always end up in a sermon on a Sunday. Okay, so Kier and I were like, oh, Lord, you know, it's going to be in his sermon on Sunday. So one <laughs> Sunday he was talking about, yeah, you know, when I go home and go to bed, I got a whole job because I got to take all the pillows off the bed. Tell about Chris got about uh, 10, 15, 15 pillows. And I'm saying to myself, Lord, he just loves to exaggerate. I'm like, Lord, you know what? You're going to get in trouble exaggerating like that in front of the church. So I came home, Gloria. I said, let me count because I know he's exaggerating. <laughs> Lord, I counted and it was 15 pillows on the bed. And I was like, oh my God. Literally every night he was taking pillows off. But I just love a beautiful bed with beautiful um, pillows. I think that's important. I also like uh, flowers and plants, especially outside. I'm like Sabrina. It's nothing like going outside and seeing beautiful plants. And I mean, I did it this year and on, on our deck out here. I just love looking outside and, and, and being able to see um, beautiful plants. I think that that brings me joy. It feels good, especially when you can see it in the summertime. So those are some of the things that I really, really Think. And then candles. It's nothing like walking in a house and smelling a great candle. Candles can put you in the mood for a lot of things. Isn't that right, Sabrina? Mm -hmm. wait, wait. <laughs> I want, Chris, I'm looking for a really good recommendation of um, the, the, not the fake candles, what do they call them, but the ones that look, re look real, but aren't real candles there are some really good ones because i i have this thing about phobia about just having candles all over my house i know some people do that but we have earthquakes and i'm like you know what well, okay shake anytime so i want a recommendation if anybody hat in our audience has it call us let us know type on the chat because i know there's some really pretty led candles thank you tony that are high-end ones that look and have the flicker 
So, um, so that is really good, really good. That's awesome. We have three callers that we are going to go to, and then we're going to come back. The girlfriends are going to give you some more juicy stuff about physically what we love to do in the home and, and how we keep the peace in the house too. So we are going to go back to back here. Get ready. First, we're going to our boy marathon. It ain't a show. I oh, mean, a house ain't a home. We got issues. We got issues. <laughs> ain't a show. I'm a marathon. It's all the lies. Let me hear from you, marathon. Talk to us about the house, Marathon. Marathon, are you there? Don't disappoint Marathon. <laughs> okay, Marathon, Marathon. you're live on the air. Oh, boy. Okay. We might be going to PG. PG is on the line. PG is on the line. Go ahead, PG. Well, I'm always on the line. Oh, I thank you, too, <laughs> Thank you so much for calling. We got issues. Talk to us. Well, I just wanted to say, please excuse my voice. I have allergies, so I'm sneezing a lot with all the wet grass and the, and the uh, rain. So I hope you ladies can understand me well. Uh, what really makes a house a home to me? And it's always the decorating aspect and making sure that you have the furniture uh, properly positioned to get the feng shui and the energy in there. But what, what makes my house a home is that, that I have an amazing silver fox that every morning I wake up, he says, good morning, sweetheart, I love you. That makes my house a home. And I, in turn, can say to him, hello, my love, I love you too. That is not for me. We have to clean up every day. We have to decorate. We want the candles. We want the plug-ins. We want our house to smell like uh, musk or uh, sun-drenched linen, gain, all those bamboo smells. But how many times can your house just be its very best when you have an awesome man that, you know, thinks you're the apple of his eye? And you're his one and only woman. That's a house for me. Oh, I'm no I rest like Yeah, I love it. <laughs> yes, 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 absolutely, absolutely. That is, you hit the nail on the head. So grateful for that. And I didn't meet my yeah. husband at church. I didn't meet him uh, at the club. I didn't meet him at the casino. I met an intellectual man at a city council meeting. He was so powerful wow. mentally that he shut down four public hearings based on four legal challenges. And I was hooked. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you, because we definitely, PG, have some single ladies that are out there saying, well, I want my house to be at home uh, like that as well. So they're going to be going to the city council meeting this week. Uh, we got issues and everything. Women have issues. So let me tell you what my issue is. And I want to speak to our black women especially, but I want to speak to all women. We have lived and survived the pandemic for going on two years. We have had to do things like our mothers did them back in the day. Spend time with the family, have conversation at the table when you're breaking bread. One thing we have got to stop doing is comparing and competing and start collaborating. What the hell could you be competing for in a pandemic when nobody can see your face? <laughs> what are you competing for when half of us are not even at work and you're working out of your house? The only thing left to do is to collaborate. And I hope we do more of that. And thank you, ladies, for taking my call. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, PG, for calling. We appreciate you and adding that because collaboration is the name of the game. It makes a difference. Collaborating in the home, collaborating out, it, it makes a difference. So many people that have started to work from home, I bet some of them would say that that has helped them to make it out of the home, not be in a stress with all that traffic and back and forth. And so there have been a lot of good things that have come into our homes as a result of this pandemic. We're going to Grace. Grace, thanks for calling. We got issues. Thanks for hanging with us. Uh, thank you, ladies. Um, a very uh, good subject to just make you smile because I think you know, we pretty much know all are, are common with this. This is just, it makes me smile. And that's the reason why I called in. For me, 
I can space, and the bigger the better. Um, my bedroom needs to be huge. His and her bedroom, um, bathroom, um, a large bed. Um, and another thing is plant. I have to have plants all through the place. Um, I like silk flowers. I'm not into real flowers, but silk flowers. I do my own arrangements. I have to have my room with, that I can sew and, and, and paint in, my, my getaway room in my office. Those things make a house a home for me. Um, and I love high ceilings. And mm-hmm. lighting is important. And you're, you're ready to you know, so mention everything. And I, 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 I need to call in because we were thinking on the same page. Uh, <laughs> high ceilings. A really high ceiling for me is, is wonderful. And, and the flooring is, is wonderful. The kitchen and the bathroom, that's a part of it also, too. Um, I, I, I just like big things. And my size, my significant other size, 15 shoes by the door. I, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Grace. We appreciate it for that. Woo! Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, that was good. That was good. And I was like, wait, you talking about the big man. We moved into a California King, you know, a couple of years ago. And I mean, those beds are big. Like, it's They're like huge. the light is still on. Like, we got to roll. Yeah. You got right, to touch each other. It's, a, it's an issue. But if you like a big bed, that's so funny. She was bringing it. She brought it home to the size 15 shoes. We love our callers, y'all. We love our callers. <laughs> You know, we um, we just came. We I know, Chris, you just came from amazing um, hotels. And we were at the Ritz-Carlton in Santa Barbara and in Laguna Niguel, which now is uh, affected by the, the oil spill yesterday. Grateful we were there mm-hmm. before that time. But I can honestly say one of the things that makes my house a home is I remember going and sleeping in my first you know high end bed in a hotel and coming home to my bed and saying why doesn't my bed feel like this why doesn't my bed feel like this i can honestly tell you that there ain't a hotel bed that i sleep in that don't feel i go home and my mattress doesn't feel as good as that mattress my bedding doesn't feel as good as that bedding thank you tony who is in the chat who t- introduced me to bamboo sheets and a bamboo weighted blanket okay my weighted blanket i mean I'm like, I can't believe that one little thing, that weighted blanket just makes you cozy. But I'm going to give you some common stressors, y'all, common stressors in your environment. And then we're going to talk a little bit about color, believe it or not. Grace just said this, a common stressor, low ceilings, low ceilings, loud noises, a glare, poor air quality uncomfortable temperature oh man okay if you live with someone who likes it hot and you like it cold i do and so i just live with a fan unpleasant sense those things could be common stressors and then just talking about color i i looked at this and um there's this psychology which isn't surprising about color um, when you study color warm colors for example tend to create feelings of energy strength and joy and white cool colors are associated with calm and creativity so when you think about what color you're going to paint your walls and what you're going to do even the very color you don't just go just based on what you like you might want to even look at it and say what does that color um, exude so you know red the color red boosts skills uh revolving around red is a power color of course a uh, yellow high energy and exciting orange i love orange and what that creates so there's the whole thing you can google and learn about what different colors do and i really like neutrals but the difference neutral is very calm so you might want neutral in some part of your house but another part of your house you might want to add more color um on purpose so my girlfriend's house i just went to her entire home is just white and neutral and you walk in and it's just it's beautiful and yet i also like when you walk in and you see somebody with a burgundy wall or you know that has created something so going back to the girlfriends um and i'm gonna weave in some other things we talked about greenery we talked about you know all the the areas that um the physical things we can do, but let's not leave them hanging. What really makes a house a home is calm, peace, agreement, lack of conflict. How do you handle that when it's, you know, how do you bring that back to your house when it's a little edgy? 
help a sister out. We're going on nine years. Pray, pray, pray. You got to pray that pray. thing. You got to pray that thing for peace. <laughs> because uh, uh, we all know that, I mean, when you walk into a home, you can feel when there's tension. You can feel when there's heaviness in the air. You can feel when there, and, and then you can feel when there's love and laughter right. and joy. It, it, there is a feeling. And so when your home is out of balance, you have got to pray. We know that it's not always that way. Um, and so life is what it is. And so you really have to be able to uh, know when it's not right to be the woman of the house and say, okay, if, I mean, the man of the house will certainly take the lead and do what he needs to do. But if he's not around, because my husband traveled a lot when the children were young. And so it was mama's responsibility to make sure that there was a centeredness and that there was peace uh, because sometimes things get out of whack. And so you pray, uh, you, you light the candles and give a sense of calm. That's what we do in the Monday household. What do you guys do, Chris and Gloria? You know what, um, Sabrina? I mean, you really have um, said um, what we typically do here. I think it is important and not everybody has an opportunity to have their own quiet place, their own getaway, because I think there are times where you got to know the appropriate time when to have certain conversations. I learned a long time ago, if you are angry, the, the worst time to try to resolve a situation is when your husband is all engrossed in a football game and they love football. I mean, if you want to take a situation from bad to worse, try to have a conversation, you know, during a time where, you know, they are doing something that they really, really enjoy. But I think also having your place where you can, you know, have your quiet time, your peace. But I also think it's important, as you said, always prayer is important. I think that um, makes a difference. But, you know, having a time where you can come together and talk and communicate and talk about the things that, you know, are making you feel a certain way, because especially if you have children in the house, you may think that they can't pick up on that. But but children right. are very sensitive to the attitudes, even if you feel like, you know, you're not arguing, you're not fussing, but they can feel that, you know, you're walking past each other, that you're not saying anything. And and remembering to, you know, as they say, a kind word turns away wrath. I think that is important that your children are able to see uh, affection. And it doesn't mean that you may not be a couple that's huggy kissy 24 seven, but I think it's important that your children feel the love um, between you uh, and your husband, because that literally, it doesn't matter if your house is the most beautiful million, three, $5 million house on the street. If inside doesn't feel warm, then mm -hmm. that means absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. How about yeah. you, Gloria? You no, know, I want to, I want to say that <clears throat> I love the fact that we brought up prayer. You know, we had a ritual Ken and I have had for years. You know, we wake up, we pray together. It's like either I pray or he prays, but just that time right there live, lives a, leaves a centering that is very important to us in our relationship. It's like the first thing we do when we wake up. And that's a that's a really important ritual. Another thing that was very important to us was the was the declaration that walking around on eggshells was not going to be a part of our reality. I mean, I had so much eggshells before and it's a very uncomfortable situation so i think it's it's a it's a nice when you can find that partner where in the good times you agree how you're going to handle the bad times you can't decide how you're going to handle the bad times in the bad times but in the good times you decide what you're going to deal with when the hard times come and one of the things is we're not going to walk on eggshells i mean you know if i'm mad then i'm gonna just like say i'm mad but you don't have to you don't have to be surprised I'm mad. And, I, you know, the silent treatment is also not an option because it fills the air. You're right, Chris. You feel it in everywhere. You're like, nobody likes to go to dinner with a couple that fights. Like, if, mm. you know, if you're going to fight, like, just don't go to dinner with them because that, that is a problem because it, it strains the conversation. And the other thing that we do is the laughter. I think the laughter and the... Uh, 
affection is a big deal. I think it's a really big deal. It's not something that you're hiding. You got to be equally yoked when it comes to the affection. And, you know, because we all four have hung out with all of our husbands and us, we have seen the degree of affection that they all have. And it's, it's really genuine. It's really fun. And it makes everybody feel comfortable. We make the couples laugh. They, we make each other laugh. We kid each mm -hmm. other. We know what's going on. They know they, the husbands know how much we know and how much we don't know or how mm -hmm. much they, we don't know. I mean, it's just sort of fun. Like, you know about that argument? No, I don't know that you had a big <laughs> down, tear down argument two days ago about something I should know nothing about. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, we all like laugh, but it gives a surrounding of, I guess what I want to say that in your home or in relationships, when you have girlfriends who have strong relationships, you know, the power of a girlfriend that has strong relationships makes your relationship stronger as well. Mm -hmm. That's so good. You know, they say the importance of not having that intense fellowship in the bedroom, um, someplace else in, in your home that, you know, not arguing in your bedroom. It can be challenging when, um, in my case, there's a lot of times that Anthony's dad is with us or my mom is um is with us and so you want to go into your bedroom for that privacy but you got to create a sanctuary so we try to go into his office or someplace else when you got to have it for me y'all know my husband is a morning person not a night person so if we have something that goes down after about three o'clock i just <laughs> need to know that it is not three getting addressed but as soon as he get up in the morning and it's his fault and the holy spirit gonna give him a download he don't come with me up at six o'clock and do me even sorry so i just that's the hardest thing for me holding on and then he come back and if it was my fault he gonna come back and tell me so it's just not having that conversation when he's not ready it's all bad if i try to talk to him at eight o'clock at night it ain't going to go well and so i just right. have learned that and it's made so, a huge difference katrina let me ask this question because and everybody is different how many of you uh, have a TV in your bedroom. You know, I've, I've talked to several um, um, couples who they just said, nope, a TV is not allowed. You know, we don't have a TV in the bedroom because that's our time. When we're in the bedroom, that's our time to talk. There's no distraction of the TV being there. And, you know, if you want to watch TV, the TV is in the common area. You watch it there. But when you go into the bedroom, there's no TV. Now, Raise your hand if you got a TV in your bedroom. Okay, so Gloria, okay, okay, good. So well, wait a minute. Is that Let why you died, Gloria? Just be clear. The reason I don't have a TV in my bedroom is because no designer put it up there, so it ain't no design. Really, honestly, we don't watch that much, so we watch in the kitchen a lot. It's not there's a place for it, and when I tell you there's a place for it. There's the, 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 what do you call that thing? The thing, the plug for it. The plug. The uh -huh. But there's no it. artwork over it either. It's just a big old bare place. It's not, so <laughs> we don't watch it. And now you guys, seriously, what's interesting is I walk around with my iPad. I put, I put on YouTube TV. I watch football on my iPad. I literally walk mm -hmm. around my iPad when I'm here. So that's yeah. my answer. Okay. okay. Since the rest of y'all have yeah. a TV in your bedroom. I agree, Chris. I agree. And I, you know, but Anthony, he is a movie person. We watch movies. And so that's part of our, you know, hanging out, getting close, watching a movie. So <laughs> we got good. TV. You sound real excited, Katrina. I hope I hope I hope Anthony, you're not listening to the way you sound and the way your face is looking. <laughs> yeah, the problem is. It's hard to find a movie because he watch all the good movies before I can get to him. That's the problem because he's, you know, he he goes bed earlier than me. But that's a whole other conversation. But we love watching movies. We both are movie people. One of the things I wanted to say that is real as we go into fall, you know, that what happens, the weather starts to change. People, uh, it gets dark earlier. Yeah, you have this like it. It just it it happens to everybody. You got to recalibrate, right? And so I just want right. to encourage people, music scent and light in your house as you go through this change of weather and stuff um, and, eat, you know, turning down, not having the news blaring, but having some music, scent, a, a nice scent, whether it's food scent for some or candle scent for others or both. And a lot of light can make all the difference in the world. Nothing like laughter, all that we said and some good affection. Um, Katrina, I used to have a friend and he said, he always wanted his house to smell like pine salt and pork chops. 
That was his <laughs> idea of a good house. <laughs> <laughs> for Chuck. That, that sounds like Chuck. Are you are you sure it wasn't Chuck? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what Chuck? It wasn't Chuck. <laughs> Oh That's my goodness. Funny. And you know what? I'm like, mm, that would I, I could deal with that right now. I'm going, I don't smell no fine salt. I don't smell no, no pork chops. So yeah, it's nothing like, you know, just think about when you used to walk into your grandma's house. I mean, all of us can remember walking into our grandmother's house, whether it was your grandma, your auntie, whoever that person was. I know for you, Sabrina, your, you know, our mama's house, as you got older, there's nothing like that smell, that smell, that smell. I can think about Alice August right now walking in there. So I want to give some quick tips for those of you on a budget. These are really easy things you can do to create um, a different space. Number one, rearrange your furniture. That's fast, that's easy. It's always good to do that and it always brings conversation. Number two, make use of old cans of paint. You have old cans of paint in your garage, in your basement, and a lot of times that in and of itself is enough. You can paint a wall with paint that you already have. Um, put old fabric swatches to use. Now, I wouldn't know what to do with them, but we all have girlfriends. <laughs> Like Chris, who could take a fabric swatch and turn it into this or that. Um, freshen up your linens, okay? <laughs> That's a big thing. Freshen up your linens. You know, just um, my mom's allergic to fabric softener, so we have to be careful. But even what you put, there's natural things you can put in your um, in your laundry that just make your linen smell different, smell better. Display your wares. You know, sometimes we want to have we want to, of course, not have a lot of clutter, but whatever your um, your thing is, sometimes you have colorful dishes or different things that you can put out that actually can be part of your decoration. Mirrors, mirrors are the fastest way to enlarge a space. You could take a space, mm -hmm. put a large mirror in there, lean the mirror up against the wall, rest it on a mantle just for a perfect touch and it makes the room look larger. Um, this is interesting. Put your unused fireplace to good use. If your fireplace, I know y'all where y'all live, fireplace gets used. I have two fireplaces, don't get used. Paint the inside of the fireplace in a bright or bold color. Place a large plant, stones, artifacts, or something, um, coffee table books, other collectibles inside the, um, the fireplace. This is huge. Pull out the photo boxes, all those photos you have, and put them in nice photo albums. Who has photo albums? Anybody? Sabrina, you got photo albums? You got photo albums? You got photo albums? <laughs> Let's talk Mine about all... photo al albums and time. We got photos. We got photo <laughs> albums. But who is going, I mean, the time that it takes to pull it out Whoa. is crazy. Like That's crazy. one of the things. I'm One of the things, probably the last project I'm going to have Allison do is take my photos out and just go through them. And, you know, not every single one of them, but how great that would be to have some photo albums that you really could look at those pictures sometimes. Um, nature. There's so much nature. You can grab pine cones and river rocks and cut up flower, you know, flowers that you gather from outside is a really easy way. Flowers are not inexpensive, but there's flowers that you can grab. And here's another, um, one other one is fruit. Take just fruit it, you know, out. It adds color and how you display your fruit in your kitchen can really, is an inexpensive way. Be healthy and to add color immediately. So girlfriends, 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 we're talking about making your house a home, uh, physically, emotionally, spiritually. Um, what else, what else you got? You know what, I love well, when you were talking about color cause somebody in the, in the, uh, Dorothy said my childhood bedroom was a, a burnt orange and I suffered from nightmares every night. The therapist asked my grandpa if he could paint the walls white or light pink and never had a nightmare again in that room. Wow. That's wow. color makes a difference mentally. That is a, just a deep comment right there that color can make so much difference. And I remember walking into my office that was purple for a long time. And after a while, I just got so sick of that purple. It was just like so sick of the purple. So then I paint, ch change it to yellow and orange, which was fabulous at first. And now I'm tired of it. So it's like, you got to keep changing the color. You got to be able to change the color and it does really make a difference, but then you got to do it. But that was a big statement, Dorothy. Thank you for that comment. 
Yeah. And you listen know what? to this. Let also, Go ahead. Chris. Let me also add that, you know, for those that are thinking, oh my God, I, 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 I'm not good at any of this. I don't have money to hire a decorator. I'm going to tell you some of the best ideas that I've gotten, whether it is decorating or even fashion is Pinterest. Pinterest has done the work for you. So if you right. basically know, you know, what colors you like, uh, what brings you joy, type it in Pinterest and bam, Pinterest will give you 101 ideas. And many of those are very inexpensive. So you don't have to feel like you have to have a lot of money in order to slam. I used to love the, the shows that would come on and they would give these designers a whopping $100 and tell them to go and make this um, room fabulous. And it would blow house. Thank you, Judy. House, H-O-U-Z-Z. -Z. I absolutely love that that's another great resource but i would love to see what they were able to do on a budget a hundred dollars two hundred dollars and what the finished deal was absolutely amazing and you know here we go again but a good thing about facebook is facebook marketplace after you go on pinterest you can google that on facebook marketplace and you know there's so much i'm ready to replace some furniture and my furniture there's nothing wrong with it it's in good use but i mean it's you know still looks new but i just want right. to replace it so at some point i'm going to be selling that furniture sometimes people just give it away i gave away a bed so there's a lot of things that you can get listen to this you guys um, this article, Home is Where Heart Is, But Where is Home? The Pew Research Center conducted a survey of 2,260 American adults. Among other things, they asked participants to identify the place in your heart you consider to be home. 38% of the respondents did not identify the place that they were currently living in to be home. 26% reported that home was where they were born or raised. Only 22% said that it was where they live now. 18% identified home as a place that they had lived in the longest and 15% felt that it was their family, the, fa the family house that they came from. Only 4% said that home was where they had gone to school. Home is a place where you feel in control, properly oriented in space and time. It is predictable. It's secure. In the words of Robert Frost, home is the place that when you have to go there, um, they have to take... Uh, people will easily take you in. In short, home is the primary connection between you and the rest of the world. It's the place where you just can be authentically you. And so just reading those statistics, there's so many people that don't feel at home in their own home. And so I challenge you to take wow. some of the things we talked about today, physically, emotionally, spiritually. I mean, of course, finding a place, getting a warm room, getting a little section in your house prayer. You'd be amazed how God will bring it all and put it together. Take um, action to make your home a home that you are proud of. Thanks yeah, for listening. Yeah, and do it like we Katrina and Sabrina and Christette and not Gloria. <laughs> That's how you do it. <laughs> we will see you tomorrow on We Got Issues. Thanks for calling in. Thanks for listening. Thanks for supporting us. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.